Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And we are here with the yeah. casual uh, kitchen table format day. Yeah. We have a very cool topic for you today, yeah. talking all about tribal stuff. Yeah, a little something different. Not like our Commander or Popper content. We don't no. have some of that today. That'll be next week. Yes. But, uh, touching something that hits the roots of magic, maybe. Hey, tribes span yeah. all formats. That's true. What? How quaint of a way to say that <laughs> before we get into that we've got a short little plug for our patreon uh we hope you guys have been checking out our patreon page and yeah. all of our other social media sites uh facebook youtube twitter instagram is a big one for us right now yeah we encourage you to go check it out all of the content on instagram is posted to facebook and twitter uh, and all of the episodes are being posted in Patreon right now. Ooh. Yes. You can donate. <laughs> you don't have to donate. Yeah, please. Uh, don't again. feel you obligated. Don't, you don't have to. No, you don't feel obligated. We're going to do this show no matter what. But right. we want to do some very cool stuff in the future oh, if yeah. we get the opportunity. And the only way to do that is with some funding. Yes. Uh, some capital. So, yes. Governor. So, uh, <laughs> all the donations from Patreon we plan to put back into the show, especially in the early stages. So, yes. don't feel like your money is going to just us as revenue. It's nothing right. like that. We we want this show to be the best that it can be. Yeah. And so, by you guys donating, hopefully we can build this show and make it even better. And uh, but look, if if one day it does turn into revenue of some kind, uh, yeah. thank you. But we're, that's not the goal, right? That isn't now. the goal. No. We're just exploring. We're, we're just having fun. Yeah. Having a little fun. We're <laughs> testing the water. Testing the water. We du we dipped our toe in. It yeah. was lovely. Nice. Uh, we're working our foot in. Luke cold. <laughs> it's not quite lukewarm yet. It's Luke cold. We'll get there. It's going <laughs> to be great. No. That's the next goal. That's the first Patreon tier is Luke cold. <laughs> Luke cold. Uh, I got to go change that now. Um, <laughs> all of the links to all of this stuff. It's all in the description. We also want to announce a sponsor with Grand Slam. Whoop, whoop. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later also, but we just wanted to thank them for all that they do. They've helped us out quite a bit yeah. uh, in providing some of these crack packs that we do at the Absolutely. end of all of our episodes. So. Huge thank you. We need to like, do they have a slogan? They no, but they are Listen, working man. on some really cool stuff. They're working on a brand new site uh, along with yeah. an online store. So that way, if you are not located in the Charlotte area, Charlotte, North Carolina area, immediate area, you yeah, you can you can shop online. We're getting that up with them right now. So that's Sweet. that is in progress. That's I actually very just exciting, helped actually. them get some of that up the other day. Oh, you you are tech savvy. A you little. Would say. Uh, you're uh, one with the code. One with the code. <laughs> it's like the force, but for but for nerds. nerds. <laughs> that was perfect. Yes. Um, but it. all of the plugs out of the way, we'll talk. We'll we'll mention again the sponsorship in a bit. Use um, the Red Hat. <laughs> use the Linux. Use the. Linux. I know you don't use Linux. But I'm just. Uh, anyway. All right. Sorry. Off topic. <coughs> we haven't even gotten to the content yet. This is it resolved. <laughs> Where the topic may or may not ever resolve. <laughs> that should be our tagline. It's so perfect. Um, Could be. We do have our card of the day. Oh, uh, let's get to that. Let's man. get to I'm that. I'm pumped for that. I always am. It's this is such a fun thing to see what what we get. Let's I bust think. open this dingus egg. <laughs> see what we got. All right, three, two, one. Blister beetle. All right, I, I'm familiar with this one, so I'll take it away. One colorless, one black. He's a one one. He says, when Blister Beetle comes into play, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. From Shards of Alara. Yeah, way back. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting. Uh, when I first got into Magic, when I was a wee lad, um, <laughs> he went into one of my decks because my buddy gave me a box of black cards. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, I don't want any of these. It was a bunch <laughs> of just common black cards. And there was a bunch of these guys in them. Yeah. Um, and I really liked him back then. I... But that was back then. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, let's talk about what it does. Uh, real simply, he's a 1-1 one, one for 2, which is like, eh. Pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, generally. He's also uh, an insect, which is lame. I don't like creepy crawlies. We've no. established that. But, yeah. I mean, he's kind of cute. He's just hanging out there with his little, I mean, his little face. He's like, hey, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> that was the perfect voice. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, it's just it's awesome. Out. You guys will see this when we release this episode, and it's on Instagram as the card of the day. Yeah. Shameless plug. Maybe those should be our thumbnails. We've been talking about what our thumbnails should be. What are the card of the day? Maybe it should be. Maybe it should. Maybe we'll it should work it be. out. I don't know. We'll anyway, 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 anyway. <laughs> so yeah, he hits the board. 
and then he shrinks a guy. He could potentially trade with another 1-1 one, one if there's a death toucher with 1-1 one, one hanging around. Yeah. Okay. But, like... You gotta, you gotta be aiming low good. for this to be yeah. good. I mean, here's the thing. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it into one of our other episodes, the quadrant theory. Ooh, I like it. So here's the deal. He is, and I, I say this like giving him the benefit of the doubt, sort mm-hmm. of, in the early, early stages of the game. Sure. Maybe it's okay. Okay. You trade with a very small creature, maybe. Okay. Or you shrink a creature to get a somewhat decent attack in. Sure. Like, that's whatever. But mm-hmm. in all three of the other quadrants, this does literally nothing. You're right. <laughs> like, and yep. when I say literally, I mean literally nothing. Yeah. Like, there's nothing that this actually accomplishes. Nah, man. Especially when you're losing. Well, I guess it, like, tips you over the edge quicker because you didn't pull yeah. a good thing. I. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a bummer. Um, I, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I will say when you draft it, this is probably like a later pick. Yeah, pick uh, like it's nine, filler, ten. maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, he does potentially trade or shrink, but he's just not. Yeah, good. it's just pretty bad. Yeah. All right, um, well, not even really casual playable, I would say. But, no, because he's yeah. you know he costs two mana for a one. Yeah, I mean that's just not garbage. Great. It's not bad great. stats. Never underestimate stats. We could have a whole video on this, and we might. But Who knows? um stats are imp- just base stats when I say that, like converted mana cost sure. to uh toughness and uh attack power sure. and toughness. Sure, I couldn't sure, think sure. of the name. It's okay. Um but it's okay. I know magic. Um but when do you put him in defense mode? When does that come into play? Uh that comes into is play that... when you leave the magic table okay. and go to the other nerd table. The worst the card worst game. card game. Okay. Anyway. Right. Um <laughs> uh sorry for all of you uh worst card game players out there um <laughs> oh man <laughs> sticking no. with that trend that's but fine. uh that's fine. It's fine. yeah you know whatever I mean, but yeah it's a bad. pretty bad card of the day yeah uh, i mean underwhelming but um hey but hey it's a beetle that's right so we can need, step on it we need like worse cards to make really good cards really good. here's the thing Every time we do this card of the day, I hope for one of two things. One, just a good card. Okay. Something fun okay. to talk about that's viable in some way, whether it be sure. limited or a constructive format. Okay. That's cool. The other thing I hope for is like so far uh, on the other end of the spectrum that it's so terrible that it's just funny. Like something from Alpha. Yeah. Like a 1-3 RAM that costs you 5 with a cumulative upkeep of 2. Yes. Something that's like that. That's stupid. But I'd love to see it as a card of yeah. the day. And it's it's card is like crowded with text, but it's all flavor text. Yes. Yes. That's the That's best perfect. Card. I will say there's a specific card I'm waiting for. Uh like, you'll be waiting a long time. I might be waiting a long time. Oh, that's right. Maybe. Um that is but, and I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is, because when it comes up, you'll know. And hey, we're gonna be doing this show long enough. I'm it's hoping gonna happen. it's the one I'm thinking of. Um, because I've got a card. My friend Tyler, who I've talked about before, uh-huh. uh huh. I gave him this card at one point. Okay. Yeah. So he knows what it is. If he ever yep. listens to this, I have no clue if he does. But How's he knows what it is. Booty? You guys will figure out what it is eventually, because eventually, I mean, we're gonna get through every card in the game. We must. This is gonna be going gonna on have long enough. Like over sixteen thousand episodes. It's gonna be great, Don't and they keep adding more. So <laughs> that's gonna make it difficult. We got some but we'll do. we'll do it. Um, no, but wow, long card of the day segment. But yeah, uh, that's fine. That's it's fine. it's, it's it a bad happen. card. End of story. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on from Blister Beetle. Let's yeah. Not- so. For today's oh. episode, we thought we would talk a little bit about tribal decks uh, yeah. and just tribes in general. Um, for any new players out there that may not know what a tribe is, uh, it's sort of a specific either creature or spell type uh, that is tied to a card. So something like elves sure. is a good example of a tribe, one that we see fairly often. Dragons, Eldrazi, all of these things qualify as a tribe. Sure. Um, and what a tribal deck is, is a deck built around that tribe. So Eldrazi, Aggro is a good example. Elves, Goblins, things like that. Sure. Um, and that's basically a culmination of cards that are all of that same creature type, although some variants can be in there. Uh, and then spells to sort of back those up. Okay. Um, some sets that I'd like to point out as fairly major tribal sets. Things like Onslaught, they had a lot of uh, the Wizards, the Dragons, Clerics, things like that. Sure. And then Lauren, which was just a great set. 
had things like elves, merfolk, Kithkin, yeah. fairies. Kithkin. Kithkin. Kithkin were cool. They were yeah. really OP. Also. They were. They were quite good. Yeah. Um, and something that I want to say is, you know, you may be asking yourself, okay, that's cool and all, but why would I play a tribal deck? Because there's so many better options out there. Well, yes, some decks are very good yes, against tribal yes decks, no. but tribal decks can be amazing. They can um, be really, really strong. Yeah. Things like the the synergies that you see in a in a deck <laughs> that's based on some sort of a tribe, generally they are so much stronger than any other deck. So things like slivers yeah, are definitely. probably the best example. Because mm-hmm. slithers, slivers, excuse me, always boost other slivers, right? Like every card is synergistic with the other cards in your deck. So it's yeah. like no matter what you're doing, you've got a synergistic play. Sure. Which just feels good every time you play I mean, it, yeah. I think. And I mean, um, it, it increases the value of everything in your deck. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Your top decks get you advantage in some way, mm-hmm. right? I mean, just immediately. You play a couple might slivers that give everything plus one plus one, yeah. and all of a sudden you can draw, you know, some one mana sliver that does some random effect that really isn't that prevalent. Sure. But if you've got a couple might slivers out, it's a one mana three three or a one mana four four. That all of a sudden becomes pretty awesome. And if it's a flyer, if it's like a gale force sliver, there or you something, go. You give everything else flying, <laughs> like, and now it's you're, amazing. <laughs> your opponent staring at a board of all four fours with flying, maybe four yes. or five of them. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, slivers and, is stupid good. And some of these decks are actually very viable. Things like slivers are very, very popular in mm-hmm. Popper. Um, elves is probably elves and merfolk are probably the more prominent ones in mm-hmm. Popper, Modern, Legacy. They're they're yeah. seen pretty much everywhere, and they've pretty much been around the longest. I think. I think so. Um, I would definitely agree, and. A lot of these decks sort of focus around the same not general focus of a bunch of creatures play a few lords, which are the mm-hmm. the creatures that pump up all of the rest. Yep. And then just swing in, right? And yeah. generally they get a fairly fast clock going because they're just pumping up all these small creatures and then getting in with a bunch of damage. Yeah, and that's the thing you're gonna see with a lot of tribal decks that <laughs> usually their win con is damage to the face. Yes. Um, which is a pretty common one, yeah. would you say? Uh but they can generally do it very well with their synergy, with yeah. their uh, aggressive style. Uh, funny story about me and Slivers. So Uh-oh. first time I saw Sliver <laughs> as a card type, yep. I read it as Silver. <laughs> so I went to play my <laughs> Silver deck at an FNM. Smooth. And someone was asking me, like, hey, what, what deck are you playing? Uh, I have a Silver deck. <laughs> Guy's like, you mean Sliver? And I said to him, Psh! No. <laughs> dead, oh my god. Dead face. Will. No, I mean silver. That's so bad. And I, I pulled out my might uh, sliver <laughs> and said, oh, never mind. That's really bad. Yeah, he beat me too. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, not a strong advocate for tribal decks. Anyway. Um, well, I was, I was new. That's fair. And I brewed bad decks. That's fair. Um, but... A lot of these decks also feature a lot of like toolbox cards um, okay. or toolbox creatures, uh, not s- sometimes spells, but generally it's based around the creatures where, okay. so for instance, there's an elf and I can't think of the name of the elf, but if you play it, you can tap it for X green mana, X being however many elves that you've got. And so you uh, can sort of get these, th- these boosts it's... out of just having a bunch of elves. You know what I mean? Yeah. I or don't goblin that grenade, either. where you can throw a goblin. Oh or man, that's such a cool card. Such a cool card. Uh, there's a lot of cool synergies with the with the spells mm-hmm. that and and these toolbox cards. And speaking to that point, one of the the favorites of basically any tribal deck is Cavern of Souls, Absolutely. which is a land that basically says when it comes into play, you get to name a card type, uh, a creature type, or something like that. So right. something like elves or something like merfolk. And you name that, and then from here on out, from the rest of the game forward, you can play any of these spells, and they're uncounterable. Which is fantastic. This, this is like a must-have for Tribal Yes. There's, it's it's so good, um, especially in the formats where you get um, the strongest Tribal decks. Mm-hmm. Counters are everywhere. Oh, yeah. Mental misstep, force of will. We've talked about them. We'll talk about them again. They're yeah. everywhere. Having that, it, it's really tough. It's like a free uh, uh, Aether Vial. Yeah, right. basically. You don't have to pay for it. It's just there. It makes exactly. mana, and now they're uncountable. And to that point, a card like Aether Vial is another favorite of a bunch of these decks, especially mm-hmm. something like Merfolk, because yeah. it does make your creatures essentially uncounterable, yeah. and you've got a lot of the creatures on the same cur- uh, same point in your mana curve, right? Yeah, like a lot of ones, so. a lot of twos, things like that. 
And so you only have to tick it up once or twice on the Aether Vial, and then all of a sudden, all of those creatures become basically free and uncounterable, Mm -hmm. Um, which means you can double up on spells a lot easier. Uh, You can flash them in at the end of turn or for a surprise block or something like that. That's fair. Um, You get a lot of these really cool uh, just toolbox cards that work great with a bunch of these, you know, uh, tribal decks and aether vials we'll and lords are pretty important because you really yeah. want those specific cards to stick yeah so it's absolutely probably a very good idea actually to run aether vial yeah and, and almost i won't say everyone but the, it has its place in sure. quite a few of them uh something like right. goblins tends not to want it so much well, and we'll slow. talk about that yeah, yeah. yeah we'll talk about that when we get into we we basically came up with a list of five tribes that we're going to sort of highlight sure. This is by no means all of the tribes. There is no. literally, if you see a creature type and it's like insect or bird warrior or something like that, right. that's a tribe, right? Yep. Like just because it's Could not be. a competitive deck doesn't mean it's not a deck. <laughs> Griffin tribal. Uh, <laughs> but the, the five that we're going to talk about now are generally fairly competitive in variable formats. It's yeah. not always the same format. Uh, some of them span a couple different formats, which is really good. And we're not saying that these are in any like particular order as in no. best to worst. These are just absolutely not five tribes that we thought of on the fly and probably the most well known. Yeah, right? probably so. Um, I also want to point out things that you don't necessarily think of as tribal decks. I know we were coming up with this list and mm-hmm. somebody mentioned Eldrazi Aggro and my initial thought was, well, that's not a tribe. But then I'm like, but wait, it is. Like, yeah, that's ex- and that's exactly what I thought. Um, I know it's not. a little weird because when you say Eldrazi, you think, I mean, technically it's a tribe, but you don't think of it that way, right? No, you really don't. Because like, all right, you've got Emrakul, that's your win con. Your win con isn't yeah. a bunch of little guys that work no, together. No, it, it's a different style of tribal deck. It is, and it's really it's good. insanely <laughs> good. Um, and another one... I don't know if you would consider this. I actually okay. looked at a few lists for okay. tribal decks, just of like the best of tribal and things like that. Sure, sure. And one that was brought up a few times, which I isn't technically a tribe, but okay. you can kind of consider it one, is Affinity. No. No. I think you can consider it one. No. I'm just saying. Well, what's his tribe? Artifact? Artifact tribal? Yeah. Uh... I mean... I'm just saying. I want that not to be right, like, but like it kind of. Yeah. You can think of it as one. Let us know what you think. Um, but the five that we've come up with, we'll start with the one that we've probably mentioned a lot already, yeah. which is elves. Um, elves, elves, elves. Which is probably one of the most viable, just in multiple mm-hmm. formats. There's a modern version. There's a legacy version. Uh, there's a popper version. Not a standard version because there's not really elves in standard. Uh, but well, there's, yeah, there's right. not a substantial amount, but no, not enough. The elves deck is insanely good. It's insanely yeah. quick, uh, which is really, really awesome. It gets things like Elvish Mystic or Lanoir Elves and things like Heritage Druid, which are your mana engines, right? right? Like you get out these turn one, turn two, and then you're able to just dump your hand on the subsequent turns because yeah. you just have so much mana available so quickly. Um, you also get things like the Lords, like Imperius Perfect or Azuri, uh, which mm. help to buff up everything. Azuri being probably one of the best. Uh, uh, yeah. Because for four mana, you can give everything plus three, plus three. All of your elves get plus three, plus three, which is your deck. And <laughs> yeah. they get trample. So you can set up these incredibly strong attacks with all these little one, one mana dorks. Yeah. Um, this goes back to our point of always kill the mana dorks. Because especially in an elves deck, you will lose. <laughs> like, yeah. that will happen. Because in, in an elves deck, a mana dork isn't just a mana dork. No. Right? Eventually, he's going to be card draw. Eventually, he's going to be a 5 5. Eventually, he's going to have God knows what else. Hexproof. Exactly. All this stuff. Like, in, in an elves deck, especially, yeah. everything should be treated way more scary than it actually yeah. is. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Azuri, of course, Path, yeah. Path Azuri. But if you've got. Bolt the mana dorks, yes. get them out of there yeah. because they will not stay a one one for very long. No, they're um, like gremlins, man. <laughs> gremlins tribal. It's basically elves. <laughs> like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, but with that being said, you mentioned a card draw. The elves deck gets elvish visionary, uh, yep. which is just a one one elf for two, but you can draw a card after you play it. So, mm-hmm. or, or when you cast it, which means it replaces itself and it's a 
it says one one really it's more like a three three a four four um potentially more than that right that replaces itself which is amazing scary yeah and it's it could also be a mana dork in elves yeah. there's another elf that lets you tap elves you're mana. exactly right so you're exactly right so uh, elves is just so good the synergies in elves are fantastic some of the toolbox cards i'd like to focus on mm-hmm. because this is in green you get things like reclamation sage which is also an elf yeah. uh, but that destroys target artifact which gives you a little bit of artifact hate, but also fills in that synergistic role. Sure. You also get Collected Company, which is one of the biggest draws for this deck. Um, you're able to just play free things, right? Yeah, like, and elves are pretty much pretty cheap across the board. Oh, yeah. I mean, Azuri is, you know... A little more expensive, Probably but one not, of the most expensive Yeah, ones. but it, it in an elf deck, it really doesn't matter because yeah. you have so much mana true, um, true, available true, true. to you. So most of your hits are going to be playable, and if you get something like Collected Company into an Elvish Visionary, mm-hmm. you get to draw a card off of it. Yep. If you get it into a Reclamation Sage, you get to blow up an artifact. I mean, there's a lot of little art- uh, little synergies that may not seem apparent on the surface, but once you play the deck and actually see how it functions, you will see how awesome this deck can be. I know I made an Elves deck sort of on a budget, yeah, um, and it was amazing. Uh, it was really good. It was very, yes. very good. Uh, so one of my favorite decks that I think I've actually built, yeah. uh, which yeah. is weird because like green is one of my least favorite colors in Magic. But well, I think it's just the way that you it think just of feels green. good. Yeah, you just need to play green a little more controlly, and you'll be happy. Control green. I mean, <laughs> it's acidic slime. Everything. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't think you can do that. But no, okay. you can't. Okay, who knows? <laughs> Beast within. I don't know. That's a terrible removal, though. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> so bad. bad. Uh, I mean, it's removal in green, though. No, it's, um, it's good for what... It, it fills a role, but it's not like... You, you would so much rather play anything else. Yeah, yeah. It's good in uh, Living End. Um, oh, yeah, okay. But that's a specific deck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would anyway. also be fun to play, but that's right. not a tribal deck, so we're not going to talk about it, Living Will. what? Exactly. Okay. I'm sorry, Kev. <laughs> living End Tribal. <laughs> no, that'd be so terrible. Anyway, no, it's not a thing. Okay, next deck. We're gonna move on to Merfolk. Bloop, a little bloop, fish. Bloop. Little fish. Uh, there's a modern deck going around right now that's doing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, there's also in a legacy vintage style uh, format. You can also see the Merfolk deck. Oh yeah, they're um, pretty much yeah in every eternal format. Basically, uh, they're very very good. And yes. what's so cool about the Merfolk deck specifically is you get to play the sort of controlling role, but still be playing a tribal deck. Well, yeah, I think that's <laughs> great. Is that you can, but you don't have to. Yeah. If you want to be all in on aggro fish. You can do it. Go for it. If you want to be a hybrid, like you said, kind of tempo control deck, exactly. you can do it. Um, Merfolk being pretty much always mono blue, would you say? Yeah, for the most part. Uh, uh, there I are some blue-black Merfolk. But yeah, but I don't know that they're worth playing I don't know, I at don't a know. competitive level. Yeah. <clears throat> Casually, all floor, everything's open to you. You can do whatever you want. But I sure. think in a competitive format, it's generally moder- mono yeah. blue. Um but when you when I say this interactivity stuff, even the creatures give you interactivity. Something like Curse Catcher, mm-hmm. you can flash it in, and then it counters a spell unless your yeah. opponent plays one. So if you played at the right time, which generally, because this is sort of a an aggro-ish deck, uh, is going to be in the early turns, you're going to sure. be able to get a free counter off, is essentially what it amounts to. Free counter for a guy. <clears throat> yeah, That's exactly. Um, it's It feels like a two-for-one. Yeah, is what it feels like because you're countering a spell on their end and getting a guy who's gonna get buffed up by your lords, things like Lord of Atlantis, right. uh, things like that. That's more in the legacy version, but you well, you know. Yeah. Um, you but to... you also get some value creatures like Master of Waves, which just pumps mm-hmm. out a bunch of guys. Uh, so you can do a wider spread of mm-hmm. attacks, or you can focus on more of the interactivity and only have a few of the creatures in your deck. Um, some of the interactivity that I've noticed has been run in a lot of these decks. Things like Spell Pierce to counter any sort of early non-creature threat, okay. uh, any removal spells, things like that. Disrupting Shoal is also actually seen, uh, which I think hmm. is pretty cool. Um, you can also run things like Mana Leak. Any of the general counter spells Ooh, yeah. are absolutely on board here. Um, the the key card, I would say, for a Merfolk deck is Spreading Seas. Yeah, because uh, of your lords. Yeah, exactly. Um, everything gets Island Walk based on the Lords and Merfolk. 
And so Spreading Seas basically turns an opponent's land into an island, mm -hmm. giving everything unblockable. Spreading Seeds also draws you a card, so it replaces itself. And there's the added benefit, if you get lucky, of nerfing one of their lands. Yep. So, for instance, if, they're, if they have three lands out, they're an Abzan deck. Green, white, black. If they've only got one green mana available to them and you Spreading Seas that green mana, they no longer have green. So they're, they're off right. of all of their green cards, right? Yeah. Um, so you, a well-timed Spreading Seas <laughs> or even Seas Claim, which is sort of a worse Spreading Seas, uh, a well-timed Spreading Seas can actually just keep your opponent off of their plays, which Definitely. is insanely good. Yeah, and that kind of plays into the Merfolk uh, control-y yeah. kind of role. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> there was a deck that I saw that ran um, Master of Waves and then the M14 guy who made the Drakes. Talarin? Yes. Talarin? Talarin? Uh, Talarin. That's Talarin. it. Yeah. And then just gobs of instants and sorceries. Yeah. Things to like stop opponent's plays and then make some guys. Yeah. Which is what those two well, do. Well, it gives you added value for all yeah. of those instants and sorceries. Yeah. All of those draw spells suddenly become creatures in addition to the draw spell, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. so much value comes out of the Merfolk deck, I think. Um, and the yeah. interactivity of it is one of my favorite things about it. I don't personally have a Merfolk deck. I'm actually missing almost all of the pieces, ex except Spreading Seas, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah. I would absolutely love to build a competitive Merfolk deck just to see how it felt. Okay. Uh, because the Elves deck, like we mentioned earlier, is focused really on the synergies of everything. This one's a little more focused on the interactivity of the game itself, and I like that. Okay. Um, the the tribal aspect is obviously still there though. Well, yeah, and that's that's, that's the key thing. Yeah, I don't uh, think a Merfolk deck. deck is complete without the lords. No, absolutely <clears throat> Excuse not. Excuse me. Um, I left my voice at the office. Oh, it happens at the office. <laughs> <laughs> office del chicken. <laughs> office del chicken. Office de pollo. Um, <laughs> um moving on <clears throat> to the <clears throat> third deck. Yes, uh, that yes. we wanted to talk about goblins. I love my goblins. Do you want to talk about the goblins? I mean, I can. Sure. Go for it. So goblins being typically in red but there are some black goblins they're not yeah, yeah. like murderous red cap comes to mind oh yeah shout out to the monday episode i hope you watch go it. watch it listen to it <laughs> probably listen right now that was a really good one. Oh, so much fun yeah counters for everything <laughs> <laughs> all right so <laughs> excuse me the goblins um so these are usually super super quick decks yeah looking like elves to dump their hand However, they do it just by keeping their curve low to the floor. Mm -hmm. They don't get dorks. They don't get things that say, you add a bunch of mana. Right. They just have one drops, two drops, maybe some three and fours, but mm -hmm. very rarely. Um, and they, they've they got a lot of interactivity with the combat step mm -hmm. as well. Like Battle you, tricks sort yeah, of a thing. Yeah, you get buffs for how many goblins you're attacking. Mm -hmm. You get like the, uh, uh, the Goblin High King. Is that the name? How am I thinking of? Yeah, sure. Like a three three, and he gets he makes a two two, and he has to attack. Other goblins have to attack. Goblin rabble master. Thank you, the rabble master. <laughs> right, high king rabble. Whatever. Uh, totally similar. No, 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 no. <laughs> I lost rabble master. It left <clears throat> my brain, as many things do. <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> goblins is super fun. Yeah. Um, you really feel like you live off the top <clears throat> of your deck when you play the goblins deck. Um, yes, that's true. There, one thing that goblins does. Uh, I think maybe better than Elves and Merfolk that we mentioned, they create more goblins mm -hmm. really quickly. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of cards that say um, make X 1-1 one, one goblin tokens. Yeah, you know? things like dragon fodder, stuff like yeah. that, just create you tokens, which empty you can the get wars. so much You don't really empty see empty no, in a tribal because no, no, no. it's too slow. It's four. It is too slow. Um, but cards like that exist. Yeah, um, absolutely. Krinko, mob boss, makes goblin tokens every upkeep or yep. something. Yep. Um, so they go wide super yeah. fast. And that's why those combat tricks really come in handy. Things mm -hmm. like Reckless Bushwhacker is one of the cards uh, oh, yeah. that you can surge in to give all of your goblins plus one plus O. Oh, and haste. And haste and swing in with everything. Yeah. And that's for two mana. Yep. So imagine, you know, you're on turn two or three, you've got a fairly full board of these goblins and then just add extra damage on top of that. Yeah. Uh, you can very quickly kill an opponent. Yeah. It's definitely the go wide of the <laughs> yes. tribal decks. Yes. Um, add in the fact that they're in red and you can put burn in their decks. Yep. Um, they turn into hyper, hyper aggressive decks. Yeah. Um, and I mean, red's just great for removal. <clears throat> but 
oftentimes by turn four or five, you'll be able to swing for face and bolt them to death. Yep. Yeah. And that's goblins like bread and butter. Yeah. If um, you just like swinging at the face, go goblins all yeah, the time. Uh, it's, pretty much. It's one of the funnest decks to play, I would say, just because it's. I, when I say easy to pilot, I don't mean that it actually doesn't have any complicated plays. I think there are plays where you have to decide, is this worth it? Things sure, like that. Sure, sure. But it's a generally, it's a general fairly easy deck to play. Oh, yes. Um, you play your guys, swing with them. Oh, right? Yes. Like, that's the goal. Um, oh, yes. You want to win within the first few turns, exactly like you said. And yeah. if you don't, you probably will fizzle out. I'm well, not saying you always will. What I like with goblins is that Oftentimes, if you draw one of those cards that says add more goblins, you're kind of revitalized in a way, you know, because that's essentially it could be like imagine mob boss Krinko. Mm -hmm. Get him turn six where you maybe have been trading a little bit. Yeah. He makes more guys and pumps some guys. Yeah. Yeah. You can create some really interesting advantaged attacks. Definitely. Based off of some of these goblins. Rival master being another one. Yeah. Goblins are slippery. They are a little bit, but, it's uh, fun. but it is very fun to play and fairly easy if you are int- introing into magic uh, and think that a tribal deck is the way to go. I would mm-hmm. definitely focus on goblins. Mm-hmm. Um, it, definitely feels like a fun a, one. it feels like a, this is going to sound insulting, like a really stupid white weenie deck. A little. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, I would agree. It's, yeah, it's got less <laughs> like answers for things and more so just things to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Goblins. Goblins. Get uh, you some. Get you some goblins. Um Hey kids. Wanna <laughs> buy some goblins? You want some goblins? Uh m- moving on to deck number four. Uh <laughs> zombies. This, These are very yes. cool. And should be on everyone's mind of late if yes. you play standard especially. Uh, this is very relevant in standard right now. Totally. Um a little less so than it was probably a couple weeks ago, but it still is a very prevalent deck. Oh yeah. Um, absolutely. And um, a very reasonably uh competitive deck i would say in i mean standard. if a deck wins the pro tour can we say you it's have to say it's competitive all right i think at that point well i think um, so i would agree <laughs> but the cool part about the zombies deck specifically is mm. the recursion yes. uh because of things like Dreadwander, a, a bunch of these creatures are able to sort of you know chump block or swing in and maybe they get killed by a combat trick or a lightning bolt and then you just get to get them back later mm. it's almost like all of the removal spells in your opponent's deck just become so much worse because they yeah. kind of don't matter. That's true. Um, it it generally is a way to like lower the value of a bunch of the cards in uh, the opponent's deck. I will say things like Path to Exile, those deal very well with the zombie decks. Definitely. But anything that hits them into the graveyard, a bolt, something like that, kind of just doesn't matter. Because you're going to be able to get it back, and they just traded a very efficient card for a zombie that you'll get back the next turn. Right, that you're not missing right now. Exactly. Um, Because of this recursion, you're able to play a little bit more of a grindy matchup that I think some of the other tribal decks don't get that advantage. Uh, The grindy matchups meaning, like, you know, you can play a bunch of zombies in the early turns, but if there's a board wipe, if there's something like that where you don't get to kill them within the first few turns... Because you are able to get them back, it sort of just means you get to prolong the game. You're never yeah. without cards in hand is what it feels like. And um, if you think back to, um, what was it? The, how am I blanking on the name? This happens every episode. I was going to say. It's like the second the time just block. this episode. The Innistrad block. That's what I was going to say. Okay. When zombies got into blue and how good yes. those decks were. Yeah. And that kept the theme of recursion, uh, but also added like a really aggressive style for blue it was pretty hyper aggressive for sure yeah all the skags that you had to like sacrifice things to get back but Mm -hmm. what was it scab ruinator ruinator scab the five five for three yeah it was something insane yeah yeah. it was ridiculous i've got a place it do you really i love those cards that's a great card it's fantastic very cool card yeah um but yeah i mean there it it can be that hyper aggressive deck to your point but at the same time, you do get that grindy yeah. matchup, and that's what's really it's... cool about it. You are never without things to do, uh, which I like. Lately, because of the standard, uh, the printing of Lord of the Accursed, we're mm. able to play uh, the Lord in standard, sure, uh, which is really important because it does pump up all of your zombies and yeah. everything, uh, which is just what you want in the tribal decks. Um, and because they're in black, uh, generally... You, right now, there's also the black-white version. There's different versions of this, but black is the constant. Sure, um, yeah, yeah. 
you they always get think. access to removal spells. So things like in standard right now, fatal push is amazing. Uh, in modern and other formats, you get dismember. Yep. Um, there's just so many good removal, efficient removal spells in black that you're able to get through for some damage, no matter what Definitely. creatures the opponent plays usually. Um, and so I, I really like the zombies deck. It doesn't feel the same way that say a goblins deck does sure, or an elves deck does. You're right. I'll say it's much, much slower. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's it. Everyone, every deck is purposeful in the way they play. But yeah. Zombies always feel like it's to the zombies point, kind of yeah. slowly building to something. Exactly. Until you realize, God, I can't kill all their board. <laughs> <laughs> like I've run out of things to yeah. do. <laughs> um and some all stars are token generators and Definitely. zombies. Oh, uh yeah. Grave Titan, things Grave like Titan's that. Fantastic. Uh Black Sun Zenith. Hmm. Uh Liliana's whatever expertise, uh, something like that. Uh I'm not sure. Are you talking about the enchantment from Alma Cat? Yeah, I think so. Uh, it, there's a bunch of standard token generators. Liliana yeah. herself and uh, Amonkhet right mm-hmm. now is doing quite well. Um, so there's a lot of really cool ways to just get some 2-2 zombies that all of a sudden become 3-3s or 4-4s. Four yeah. And then you can sack them to get your other ones back or do something like that. Right. Um, or just ping them for one, drain them for life. Uh, Wayward Servant? Yeah, is that the name it. of it? Uh, the white, mm-hmm. black zombie that every time you play a zombie, they lose a life, you gain a life. Uh, just the synergy there is fantastic. Yeah, zombies is very uh, reachy, you could yeah. say, in that respect. Mm-hmm. That especially being in black, they will drain you. Like yeah, you're saying like absolutely. You're saying. Um, but yeah, and they open themselves up a lot of ways. If you want to look at them in an eternal sense, mm-hmm. because they're in blue, because they're in white, you. I'm not saying it's it's happened, <laughs> but you could see yourself having a more tempo-y, controlly zombie kind yeah, of. Yeah, you could kind um, of thing. I don't know how good it would be, but you definitely could make it. You know, yeah, I don't think it'd be great. If your win con is like uh, Scav Goliath, it's just not right. awesome. Right. Um, but oh. that is what's cool about Magic is that you can build these decks and try them out. Well, so right. I True. would absolutely recommend trying this out because it's very, very fun to play, um, yeah. I would say. Zombies are cool. Zombies are cool. Um, moving to the last and probably one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, the Silvers. The Silvers. Uh, no, the slivers, because <laughs> we know what magic is, even well, if Will doesn't. I just don't um, know how to read, Kevin. <laughs> That's my problem. So, as we mentioned sort of at the top of the episode, the sliver decks are really based around the synergies. Yeah. It's play a sliver, everything gets a buff. Play another sliver, everything yeah. else gets a buff. I don't think there's a sliver card that does not say... Not true. <gasps> I know where you're going with this. There is a... I believe it's like an artifact sliver... That's just like a one. Oh sliver. yeah, it's a two-two um, sliver. A two-two maybe. Yeah, and it might just be. It sliver. just has some flavor text, and it's just a sliver. You're and right. That's it. You're right. Um, actually, spoke too soon. Yeah, no magic. Dang yeah, it. we're trying to help these people. Oh, are we? I thought. Oh, okay. So we went back to silvers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but with the slivers, like I said, you get to buff everything in some way. Yep. Um, things like might sliver are played a lot in popper. And just mm-hmm. in the general sliver, modern slivers, things like that. Um, they give everything else plus one, plus one, all other slivers, including themselves, it's worth noting. Um, mana web sliver, I believe, makes everything tap for any color mana. Yes, that's true. So you can cheat a bunch of slivers out that way. It's really um, fun. Slivers give flying, slivers give vigilance, slivers give haste. I mean, there's tons. I think every evergreen effect is on a sliver. I believe so. Oh, First nice strike. use of evergreen. I learned it the other week, so I got to right. bust it out. I got you. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it, it it it's very, very synergistic. Um, it's also in all colors. Uh, <laughs> Will's just dancing right now. He's really excited that Anytime he's the Anytime Kevin's proud of me, <laughs> I get really happy. Uh, it doesn't happen often. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't. No, but because slivers are in all colors, mm-hmm. there's any number of ways to build a slivers deck. Sure. Uh, which I think is really, really cool. You can build it more removal heavy uh, in the black side of things. You can move it to a burn heavy deck sure. in the red, uh, a little more focused on just the creature base in white or green, uh, the mana ramp in green. There's just so many ways to play it um evasion in blue things like flying you get that yeah. aspect of it and then you have the sliver lords uh sliver queen sliver queen silver queen yeah <laughs> which it good to point out um uh, sl- uh slivers is probably one of the strongest tribal decks in commander oh um, goodness there's yes. an elves tribal deck that's that's stupid good but slivers 
They're pretty insane. Yeah, they're pretty good. I um, mean, basically what it amounts to is late game when you get to play, oh, you've yes. have you have a few slivers out. Every card you play, every creature you play is just insane. Yeah. Like you can get to to the point where like you're playing, you know, two two sliver, whatever, mm-hmm. no flavor text or just flavor text, nothing add on it at all becomes a flying haste five five. The the turn it comes out. Well, that's kind of I mean, kind of mean. I mean, but I'm <laughs> yeah. just saying, like that happens. No, you're you know what I mean. Right. And so it's it's pretty insane some of the things that can happen with the sliver decks. Uh, but a very very cool deck nonetheless. Oh yeah. Um, very and fun. definitely able to suit different play styles. Um, if yeah. you're if you're wanting to sort of focus on a tribe, but maybe don't know which direction to go. Uh, but want to try out a few different things, maybe this is sort of the tribal deck for you. Yeah, I'd say um, they're probably strongest focusing on green. I think so. Uh, just because green's the one that bumps up your Buffs slivers everything. and you get mana whipped. Yes. So it's easier to play other things. But, Absolutely. I mean, that might be like a 30%, 20% of the yeah. card pool and everything, yeah. you know. But it's, it, like you said, it's not focused particularly in any one yeah, color. exactly. Um, but yeah, slivers can get strong. It's insane. Quick, they slippery. Do you know slippery. any of the lore behind the slivers? Because I sure don't. Um, I know, uh, not really. All I right. know there was a sliver hive that was a big deal, and uh, some of the planeswalkers had to go through the sliver hive, but I do not remember Ooh, exactly how slippery. that went. Yeah. Well, they made it through, I guess. I mean, I guess so, because they're in some Gatewatch crap now. Gatewatch. Lame. <laughs> what are you, the um, Justice League? <laughs> what? Kind of. A team of super friends. <laughs> There should be a cartoon based off of Form the game. Form of a cat guy. A Johnny. Is that who you're talking about? And he's a cat person. A Leonin. A Leonin. Any Leonins out there? I'm sorry if I was a bit racist. <laughs> I didn't mean to call you a cat guy. All right. And with that, uh, <laughs> Yo, um, here's the deal, guys. Face. We talked about five tribes here. We mentioned a few others, but we yeah. want to know what your favorite tribal What's deck is. What's your favorite is. tribe? If it's not Griffin's, you're wrong. Get out. Okay, end of story. <laughs> Next. Put Griffin. No, Just please appease don't. him a little bit. <laughs> please don't. Um, no, but seriously, we want to know what tribes are your favorites. Uh, if we didn't talk about them here, maybe we'll talk about them on a later episode. We'd love to hear about them and talk about them. Uh, even if it's something silly like Griffin's, <laughs> we can I talk about it. beg your pardon. We can talk about it. Um, so we encourage so you silly. in the comment section on YouTube or on Facebook, something like that. Uh, let us know what your favorite tribe is. Yeah. We'd, we'd be happy Tell to talk us. about it. Tell us. Give us your wisdom, magic community. Give us your wisdom. Lord um, knows we need it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Lord of the Accursed knows we need it. <laughs> Lord of Atlantis, Lord of the Accursed. Yada, yada, yada. Lord of magic. Let's live a queen. <laughs> knows we need it. All right. Anyway, off of the main topic now. Whew. Got tribal stuff out of the way. We are here thank with you. our crack of packs this week or this episode. Sponsored. Sponsored by Grand Slam Absolutely. Comics and Collectibles uh, in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Again, just south of Charlotte. Uh, about huge 10 shout minutes. Out. Uh, huge shout out to Clamp over there who has helped us in providing us with some packs. Help us in a big way. Yeah. And we are very appreciative. Yeah. Uh, they are a a very nice group of people over there Absolutely. who care a lot about the products they've got. Um, they like sharing, you know? Yeah, our they do. Our nerd culture. Um, they do have a lot of stuff going on right now. They're moving into magic, but right now they've got a lot of stuff with Pokemon going on. So if yep. that is your cup of tea, uh, yep. go check them out. They do box breaks, I believe, every Saturday, mm. as well as box battles uh, if you're in the store. Ooh. Um, but the box That's breaks, so they, yeah, they are very cool. But, um, you actually went and watched one the other day. It was really fun. Um, big group of people just come to hang out and, you know, be a part of that. It's sure. a great way to build the community and actually meet some fun people. Mm. Uh, so I would definitely encourage you to go check them out. Links are in the description below to their current website, as well as their Facebook page. Uh, again, their website is being worked on right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, so if it's not, Fully well, functional, that's yeah. why. Um, but they are in the process of getting that up, so it should be up very soon. We will Fingers let you crossed. know yeah, yeah. Uh, as soon as we hear anything. Of course, and we will link all of their things. All of their things. And all of our things. It's all down there. In the doobly-doo. In the doobly-doo. Uh, but with that, we do have our crack pack Again, right. we're going through these and saying maybe what would be our first pick, yep, yep, yep. something like that in a limited environment. And we also have our goal cards. Yes. Mine's getting into the trials still. Weird. Uh, <laughs> mine is Combat Celebrant. 
still celebrant <laughs> celebrated celebrity. celebrated <laughs> yes he adds uh combat phases when he's exerted he seems pretty good yeah all right so good. kevin has seen mine i have i want it to be known and he's excited and i, I am know, i don't know why just because it's silly interesting all right we're well, not doing it yet <laughs> next card nope next card it's a good card though. i <laughs> freaking knew it he called it before the episode started it's it's nahib the, the unworthy. unworthy. The... <laughs> no, Kevin. It's worthy. Uh, so what else do you have? What would you consider good cards in this pack? So Neheb, it, immediately, he is fantastic. Um, you've also got Grot, On Crop <laughs> Champion. I did that thing where I was reading something, mm-hmm. and I tried to speak at the same time. Yeah. And they formed an amalgamation of embarrassment. Mm-hmm. There you go. So On Crop <laughs> Champion uh, you can exert it as it attacks. When you do, untap all other creatures. It's great in some kind of exerted deck. Uh, Fan Bear is awesome for dealing with any permanent threats, but there's also Cast Out. Quarry Holler is fantastic. This is a really good this pack. It's a pretty good pack. You also have a Naga Vitalist and Compulsory Rest. Yeah, I actually have I also really grown to love Unburden. I know it's a little really? odd, but that it cycles odd. and it discards two cards, which can be very relevant. Um, I've seen it do some very major work. Yeah, but look, here's my thing: that yeah. you are gambling that you're gonna hit stuff. You're right, but because you might just here's the thing though. Bomb. You also, if it doesn't work or if it doesn't have a target, you just cycle it. It doesn't matter. Well, it's always gonna have a target because your opponent's always gonna have a hand. But not always. Well, not always. But you draw I, it late game, know. you just cycle it. I like it. I'm not saying it's first pickable. It's don't got, get me wrong. God, no, it's not. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> okay. I think I know what I'd pick. I I love cast out yeah. in that you know it casts exiles something out. fantastic. <laughs> um, but if we're talking limited, yeah, head might be the way I go, That's and just fair. reach into minotaurs maybe. Although cast out is usable if I have minotaurs or not. Yeah. Um, Corey Holler is also really good. This is such a good pack. I think so. Uh, honestly, yeah. I'd pick cast out probably a okay. little hands down. Solely because it leaves you open to going into a lot of different avenues, sure, and it's sure. just one of the best removal spells in this format. Yeah, it also cycles. It also cycles. Corey so Holler, man, it's so good. It is very good. There's a lot of good cards in this pack. Jeez. I think that's... No, you know what? I'm going to go with my gut. It's in the head for me. All right, fair I, enough, It was my man. gold card. It's got to be my first pick. Hey. Pick pack card. No worries. I, build uh, into, I mean, and having guys to build around is never bad. No, it's not a bad thing. Right? Um, so I've opened my pack. I did not get my gold card, Bummer. but I got a cool card. Not one that I'm going to pick in limited, but I got glorious end. Uh, oh, nice. Which I just love this card. It's an instant for two and a red. <clears throat> it says in the turn. All right. Um, and, and at the beginning of your next end step, you lose the game. <laughs> so here's what you do with that. If you can win on board <laughs> at their, at upkeep, their upkeep, you, you end, end the, the turn. turn. <laughs> It's awesome. Yes. I really like that card. Uh, uh, yeah. There's, it's interesting. There's other combos you can pull it off with in standard right now, but off the bat, yeah, that's what you'd want to use it for. Yeah. Um, I guess in a in limited sense. But yeah, you don't think you pick this in limited? No, no definitely I don't, I don't not. Think so it's either. pretty bad in limited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really <laughs> do anything. Um, so as far as pickable cards for me, mm. uh, first pickable cards... I've got a Crocodile of the Crossing, which I think is just a great four-mana creature. I've got a Watchful Naga, which I've had very good experiences with. It draws you some cards, uh, which in green is very good. True Heart Duelist is awesome. Uh, It's got Embalm, and it can block two creatures. So you just sort of stall the game out until you get to your late game. He does slow you down a lot. Um, I see my pick there. Yeah. That's it. Uh, I've also got a Horror of the Broken Lands, uh, which is probably going to be my first pick. Whenever you cycle or discard another card, uh, it gets plus two, plus one, and you can cycle him. He's also already a 4 4. Yeah. Uh, So that's probably my pick. Other cards that I would hope to maybe wheel, uh, aside from the ones I've already mentioned, Impeccable Timing, I think, is a decent removal spell. It's not great, but it's there. Yeah. Um, It's all right. Anointer Priest, I also like quite a bit. Uh, not necessarily in a cycling deck, but I just think it's a good filler card for a lot of the embalm uh, triggers and things like that. So, okay. um, especially with True Heart Duelist, it would be fantastic. So, yeah. something like that. But yeah, 
a decent pack. Probably not as good as yours, but that horror is pretty Well, awesome. I don't know. Horror is probably the all-star common from Amon Cat. It's one um, of them, for it sure. Does, it does some It does a lot of work. work. Like, I just feel like someone who was designing this card, like, <laughs> accidentally hit plus two, plus one, <laughs> instead of, like, plus one, plus oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna give him. Uh, oh, whatever. All the things. Yeah, he just gets it. Do you want him to have, like, all the power? How many one mana cyclers are in this set? That's nah, fine. It'll be all right. I'll print them anyway. <laughs> I can do what I want. Yeah, totally. I don't know what that voice is, but I mean, there you go. You made it. Um, if I'm hired by Wizards, I'll talk like that <laughs> all <laughs> the time. Well, all right. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen. All yeah. right. So uh, again, thank you to Grand Slam. We really appreciate it, oh, and yes. we will huge, continue to work with them. Huge thank you. Um, Fantastic again, people. Check out our social media stuff. Our Patreon is up. We encourage you guys to go donate. We plan to do a few giveaways very soon. Oh yeah. Once Stay we on get, the lookout for that. We an unspecified amount. We're talking about it, but as soon as we get a few patrons, X amount. We don't know what that is. Uh, we're gonna plan some giveaways. Yep. Maybe on Instagram too. So. And some uh, Patreon only content. We'd like to do something special Heck just for our patrons. Yeah. So um, maybe you'll be the first people to see our faces. That'd be awesome. But uh, if you do decide to donate again, we appreciate it, yeah, and uh, huge, we look you. forward to hanging out with you guys in Absolutely. the future. So what a great way to say it. Yeah. With that, we are finished with our kitchen table casual day. Thursday. We hope you had fun listening to us and hanging out and talking all things tribal. It was awesome. Uh, but with that, we're going to get out of here. Yeah, My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. Alves. Alves. <laughs> <laughs>